But good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the latest Your Hub webinar, um, where today we're going to specifically look at training and the benefits of a project management apprenticeship. Um, and it's going to be a presentation by consultancy company PL Projects. Um, just for the benefit of those attending, we've got a scheduled one hour slot today. Um, please feel free to ask any questions um, that you may see fit, but we would appreciate it if you can leave it till uh, the presentation has completed. Uh, and we'll take all any questions and answers right at the end. Just to let you know that the um, slides that we've got in a recording will be made available. Uh, to you all and uh, Julie will actually be emailing all the attendees with uh, details uh, with regards to that. Um, just by way of initial introduction, I'm Chris Jackson. Um, I actually work for Sheffield City Council. I'm a Chartered Quantity Surveyor, uh, but we at Sheffield City Council are a contracting authority to the Your Hub Frameworks and specifically I'm, I'm also involved with the Your Consult and Your Civil Frameworks. So. That's a little bit of background for me, and um, I've got the role of hosting today. Um, just as a by the way, the you know for all those attending uh, and for any consultants and contractors that are associated with the, your hub frameworks, anything that goes through in terms of the PM apprenticeship or anything of that nature certainly does um, uh, comply with our own employment and skills requirements for the framework. So there's, there, there is a link to what we are going to be talking about today. Um, we have two speakers, two main speakers, um, and from um, PL Projects. I'm going to refer to it as PLP uh, because it is a bit of a mouth mouth, mouth load to get round. Um, so from PLP, we do have uh, two main speakers today. Um, we have Mike Bates with us. Uh, Mike is a director of PLP and has been with the organisation for 10 years now. Uh, but prior to that, he spent several years um, in general construction and house building uh, before moving into academia, where he lectured on uh, project management, undergrad and postgrad courses, notably at Leeds, Beckett and Huddersfield. Um, Mike's also worked uh, with the Association for Project Management, which I think quite a few of you in the audience will be familiar with. Uh, assisting them with the development uh, of their academic accreditation processes and is currently still part of their accredita um, accreditation team. Um, once Mike joined PL projects, um, he did continue to work with the APM, ensuring uh, that all PL projects courses were accredited. Uh, and his current role within the organisation uh, involves providing project management uh, training for both internal staff and for clients through their APM accredited training courses, um, as well as significant involvement um, in the L4 Associate Project Manager Apprenticeships. And finally for Mike, um, and for those of you who might be lucky enough to get onto uh, who wants to be a millionaire and you desperately need to phone a friend, then Mike's the man and it's good to know that he specializes with words. Uh, is an expert in crosswords, anything literary and anything musical and can also throw in a bit of cycling for good measure. So that's your phone, a friend. Uh, so it's a warm welcome to Mike. Roughly halfway through, we'll have a contribution from Rosie Costello, uh, who is actually in the process of undertaking um, an apprenticeship through PLP. Uh, but I will let Mike and Josie uh, do the introductions at that point. Um, kicking off the event today uh, will be Josie Rotherer. Uh, now, Josie has been with PL Projects uh, for just a year. Uh, she is a chartered civil engineer and has spent 10 years as a construction manager working for the likes of Balfour Beatty, Carillion and Bovis, uh, before moving to Leeds Beckett, where she taught management modules uh, and the APM. I'm going to get this right now. I'll be in trouble if I don't. It's the APM Project Management Fundamentals, otherwise known as the PFQ and the Project Management Qualification, uh, otherwise known as PMQ, I think I've got that right, uh, whilst also acting as course director for the MSC um, Civil Engineering. Now within PL projects, Josie works predominantly um, with the training team, delivering the PFQ and the PMQ courses and the level four associate project management apprenticeship and also works with other bodies such as the Institute of Civil Engineers and the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education. 
and she's currently working towards a doctorate of engineering investigating uh, learning styles of degree apprenticeship students. So I think between, uh, between Josie and Mike, we've got a wealth of experience there, both practical and academia. And finally, be careful if you do invite Josie to go with you on a run, uh, as you may well be out for quite a while, as it will be most likely include a, a swim and a bike ride as well. So we're talking about some serious exercise there. And she does, however, claim that all of that is a precursor to good food and wine. Count me in on the latter, uh, Josie, forget the first bit, I'll pass on that. So with that, and um, without further ado, um, can I hand over to Josie, who will introduce us to this morning's presentation? Absolutely. Um, thanks, Chris, for that uh, introduction there. And uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us as well. Um, so I hope that you all have joined us to hear more about apprenticeships specifically in project management, and some benefits that might emerge from having an apprentice or even more than one in your team. There's three of us that are gonna to present today. Um, firstly, Mike, um, then myself, and then uh, Rosie at the end. First of all, I'll hand over to, to Mike to give you uh, some, some more <laughs> information about himself um, as the director at PLP. Thanks, Mike. Cheers, Josie, and thanks, Chris. So yes, I'm that uh, esteemed gentleman that Chris was referring to. Uh, you'll see on this slide, I'm a proud owner of the FAPM uh, postnomial there. That's a fellow. I was told unceremoniously that you just get it for being white haired, which is, that's fine. That suits me fine. Um, so significant involvement with the APM. Very proud of where the APMs come from. Uh, in the short period of time I've been involved with it, the project management profession has come of age with the, um, with the professional body achieving its chartered status four years ago. That was a significant milestone. Very proud of that, as I say. Uh, with PL Projects, as Chris said, 10 years engagement involvement, having moved on from the university sector uh, and we, I'll tell you a bit more in, uh, in due course, but with our consultancy and training provision, you know, it's good to have kept my involvement with the um, profession and development of project managers of the future. Uh, and the recent move to the apprenticeship that you're going to hear much more of in, the, uh, in this presentation takes up the bulk of my time. Uh, and I'm, yes desperately proud of what we're doing on the apprenticeship. It's a good move for the, um, for the profession. Enough, Josie, back to you. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Mike. Um, so as Chris said, I'm Josie Rotherer. Um, I'm a mere associate of the Association for Project Management, um, but cut my first professional cloth as a, as a chartered civil engineer. Um, I've been working for PL Project since um, October last year, and as Chris said, I've been working at Leeds Beckett before then, mainly in the, the civil engineering teams, but I also taught in the what's called the Centre for Project Management, delivering on the PFQ and the, and the PMQ. Um, and as Mike said, the apprenticeships uh, take up a lot of our time now. Um, we still run um, the, uh, the sort of open courses, as we call them, of the PMQ and the PFQ. But apprenticeships are something that we're giving a lot of our time to and uh, we're thoroughly enjoying it at the moment. Um, I'm also a ROOT panel member, which is the construction ROOT panel member for the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education. So you would hope that I understand apprenticeships relatively well. We also have with us today, voluntarily, no arm twisting, honestly, uh, Rosie Costello, who's a senior project officer at Leeds City Council and started the apprenticeship last October. And Rosie's gonna give you an insight as to how the apprenticeship is going for her and how it links back to her role and her team later on in the webinar today. So the objectives today uh, firstly, to provide an introduction to us and our experience, and then more broadly around the new or newish approach um, to apprenticeships since the industrial strategy was launched in 2016. Secondly, we're going to explore some of the benefits, and I've grouped these into four categories that I'll explore in a bit more detail. And finally, we'll give you some practicalities around the level four associate project manager apprentice with some first-hand experience from Rosie. 
at the end, there is some chance, uh, a chance to ask some questions. Um, Chris will help manage these. Um, and as he said, please use that Q&A box as we go through. I don't expect to talk for too long, so we should have plenty of time to get through any questions that you have at the end. So I'm going to hand over to Mike to give you um, a bit of a background um, about PL projects and, and what, what we do. Thanks, Mike. Just messing with the mute button as we all do these days. The, um, as I've just said, the PL projects when I left the university sector, um, just thinking I've probably got 10 years of career left uh, and I wanted to just do something different. Uh, I set up PL projects in its current incarnation um, with a student of mine from 1995 who I kept in touch with in the industry uh, so he was yeah he qualified in 95 with his project management degree and he'd gone out into the world significantly into the world of big PMO projects this is Rob one of the fellow directors um, he'd been involved in Boris's bikes and uh, terminal five upgrades and done some work in the atomic sector and what we did uh, back in 2012, we set up the consultancy. So Rob looked after taking some of the junior members under his wing, uh, taking them into network rail, um, NHS digital projects, DEFRA. We would work significantly in project controls, governance. We feature significantly in the PMOs, the project management office. Uh, so we've got from having one of our graduates, <coughs> one of our the Leeds Beckett project management graduates is our first employee. We've now got 20 people and we still take, still have a significant involvement with um, Leeds Beckett University there. So half of what we do is out there supporting organizations in the big projects, the big infrastructure projects, in the project support function. The other side of what PLP does, the second item there is training. So you'll recognize from what Chris said, I have a significant involvement together with Josie and another colleague, Paul, on delivering the training. Uh, first thing we did when creating PLP um, was to become accredited with the professional body. Uh, you need to do that to deliver their qualifications, the introductory PFQ and the more significant PMQ that Rosie's looking forward to doing in due course. Um, and the PMQ, if you don't know already, for my money, that's the significant benchmark qualification within the project management fraternity. It's sort of recognized as your project management knowledge driving license. Okay, and you, some of you might have heard of um, things like the Prince 2 qualification. That's similar. For my money, the PMQ is that good stamp that you've got, that recognition that you've got a good understanding of what comprises project management. And that last plaudit there, you will see we're quite proud. The APM have just upgraded the, or revised the body of knowledge that the exams are based upon. So we're on body of knowledge, seventh edition now. Uh, and that embraces some of the newer material in project management, such as the agile thinking when it comes to delivery of um, some of the software projects. But you can see there the PMQ national average, the pass rate, nationally is of the order of 70%, 68% specifically over the last year. And we're proud to be achieving well above that. Um, and you'll hear more of that in due course. The business, as well as delivering the consultancy side, the training side, there's something I like to think I've contributed to in terms of the culture of the business. We're very people-centric. You know, sometimes I felt at university, 
maybe the staff didn't get the care and attention they deserved and it's sometimes impacted upon motivation i think crucial that we look after our people and keep them motivated and as well as that we're very passionate in terms of sustainability looking after the environment it's where we live uh, and we were proud winners of the rise award a rise award poster in 2019 uh, for work we did just looking at how sme small medium enterprises you know what they can do in developing uh, their approach to sustainability so the rise award was um, part of the Leeds Sustainability Institute. It's their Research, Innovation, Sustainability and Enterprise Award. So we were proud recipients of that and we're hoping to do as well again this year. Um, last on the list there, apprenticeships we've mentioned. Rosie's one of the current um, cohort. So you'll hear from her in due course. But yes, in conjunction with Leeds City Council that we've done a lot of work with over the years, just helping their staff or just contributing to their the training of their staff with the PMQ. When we started to see the advent of the Associate Project Manager Apprenticeship, um, we worked with Leeds City Council to develop that and we run that in conjunction with Leeds City College. Uh, and you're about to hear more of that now. So over to you, Josie. That's brilliant. Thanks, Mike. Um, so just to give you a, a bit of a say history, a sort of overview of apprenticeships. Um, in 2016, the industrial strategy was launched at the same time um, the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education was created. And the purpose was to move the old style apprenticeships away from the design and the delivery of educational bodies and put them more in the hands of the employer. Effectively getting to make sure um, that the skills that the apprenticeships were delivering were required by industry and that there were clear roles, um, job roles being advertised for. To support this, 20% um, off the job training was included in all apprenticeships and that's for that skill development. Um, and this is mandatory. Depending on the level of apprenticeship, linked with durations, there are funding bands that have been set by the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education. And, and this is what's drawn down by the training provider for the apprenticeship. So for instance, a level six civil engineering apprenticeship funding is set at £27,000 over five years. And the level four associate project manager apprenticeship is £7,000 over 24 months. And that funding is reviewed every three years or so. So who has to pay the levy? If your annual employee bill is more than three million pounds, you will pay half a percentage of this into the HMRC. And this is known as your levy pot. Um, and it's what you can access for using or for training apprentices. You can imagine local authorities will be paying lots into this pot. And I think one of the biggest pot contributions is, is the NHS. By only accessing this for apprenticeships and in some cases training, this means the employer is best advised to start putting people on these sort of programmes. As a small incentive, if you could call it that, any unused levy after two years makes its way back into central government pockets. So how do you find out about what apprenticeships are available? Um, the Institute for Apprenticeships and Technical Education is the best place, their website is the best place to start. Um, the new apprenticeships are written into what are called standards, and it tells you about the, the knowledge, the skills and the behaviours that will be developed and any on programme, which means things that you have to do before the end of the apprenticeship, um, assessments that need to take place. It will also tell you what that end point assessment looks about. Um, looks like and, and that will be what's used to see if you're successful in the apprenticeship or not and generally it's on a pass fail merit distinction basis 
to search what categories or, or what apprentice standards are there. They're set into categories and these are grouped using Lord's Sainsbury's report, but they should be relatively easy to navigate. Um, the groups will be, you know, business and management, there's a construction and there's engineering and manufacturing to name a few. What is important is that each standard should allow a progression to an upper level if that's what's required, um, or sideways movements as well. So the standard is not only then providing a role in industry that's needed, but there's also that lifelong skills development, which can be continued to be accessed. So I moved into academia in 2012, and I think it was probably two years before I got my head around what levels were. And if you're not in academia, how on earth are you supposed to know what a level means? So here is my brief summary. Level two is effectively a GCSE. Level three is A level. Level four is, is your first year at university, which might be an HNC. Um, level five is the HND, your second year at uni. Level six is an undergraduate degree. Um, level seven postgrad and level eight if you're doing a doctor, um, a doctorship there as well. Hopefully that makes a bit more sense to you. There are two main project management apprenticeships. There's the level four associate project manager and the level six project manager. The professional body, the APM, have been part of the Trailblazer group and the PMQ qualification sits in both of these as an on-programme assessment. The level six will include an undergraduate degree in project management delivered by a training provider with an existing course. So you probably have to be using a university training provider to do that. PLP only deliver the level four associate project management uh, apprenticeship. However, with our extensive previous links to universities and our successful PMQ training, we expect to be supporting um, on some of those level six apprenticeships in the future. For the purposes of today, I'm just going to be giving you information around the level four apprenticeship because it's what we are delivering. So my first benefit, I've called giving it a name. We all work in companies that have processes and that is not unusual. With employers such as local authorities where the scope of their activities is so diverse, there becomes definitions and terminologies that could be specific to departments. It might be that terms will be adopted across the business. Use of language is a critical aspect of communication, which in turn can lead to successful projects. And without having standard and consistent terms, this can sometimes be lost. So what is a project and what is project management? The APM definition of a project is a unique and transient endeavor undertaken to bring about change and to achieve planned objectives. It is unique because it hasn't been done before and it is transient because time can be applied to it. So there is a start date and an expected finish date. Projects bring about change to a business because once that project is done, this change will be used by the business and the outcome will be moved into what we call business as usual. So take a new road, for example, that is a project because it is unique and transient, even if it's the same specification as other roads, because of the context in which it is delivered in and who delivers it, it will be different each time. As soon as that road is complete and people start to use it, the, the business as usual for the company that owns that road will have that responsibility to maintain it. But maintenance won't be a project, that maintenance is business as usual. Project management is defined as the application of processes, methods, knowledge, skills and experience to achieve specific objectives for change. It's all that stuff that needs to be in place to make sure that the project is successfully completed and that what the project set out to do in the first place, the change that it was going to bring to the business is achieved. Project life cycles is about how you manage these projects. Most of us will be familiar with the waterfall or the linear approach. You essentially make sure that you have the right information, the right resources and the right scope for the project and will be checking against these regularly. You might call these decision gates 
or, or checkpoints. If the project is not going in the right direction, you might adjust this, or it could be stopped before any money is spent and it's no longer going to bring about that change that you first wanted. Having these decision gates in place and the right people to make those decisions is an example of good governance. An example of this could be COVID-19. Many projects were put on hold or were stopped during the pandemic as the context in which they were being delivered changed or the need for them might also have changed. As I said at the beginning, we all work in companies that have processes. Understanding more about whether the processes that you are using are the right ones for your business and how these processes are supported by your people and technology will allow you to better approach projects. Textbook APM thinking on the types of approaches that might help and understand any opportunities available will be a benefit um, for the apprentice to learn about and for your team as well. Adjusting your approach to delivering projects could benefit from a portfolio program and project setup and highlighting where business as usual sits and successful practices to incorporate new change will embed project benefits quicker. Resources fall into three main categories, people, material and equipment. Knowing your people and the skill sets they have is crucially important to any business. New technologies can be bought, but how these are adopted into practice is a large part of the battle. Sharing knowledge on projects with wider areas of the business through people's experience, talking to one another, will help ensure that you have the right skills and the right place and you're not doubling up on resources. And this will also link to continual improvement. So by training somebody, by using the apprenticeship, to have an idea about these things that you are possibly already doing, but you haven't really given a name to, you can now give a name to, and you can use more consistently across your business. And this will allow the learning cycle to start. This is when, if you look at the infographic on the slide, you move from that awareness part into that learning, and then finally into something that might come more as second nature to you. And this is what we would refer to as your journey into project management maturity. Benefit number two is applied skills. Every standard is written around three main applications, knowledge, skills, and behaviors. No matter what level of apprenticeship you are on, you should use 20% of your employment hours to contribute to the development of these. How are these recorded? Very basically, on a log which you keep updated. In the Associate Project Manager Apprenticeship, the knowledge part is satisfied by achieving the PMQ on programme assessment. This is the textbook way that the APM's knowledge body of knowledge describes project management. The skills part of the standard is applied skills. This is the apprentice taking that knowledge and seeing how it works in their role, in their team and the wider business. This applied skill will mean that the apprentice will be engaging with you on what they have learned and offering improvements to current documents or processes, which actually might be a good idea. Apprentices could well be asked to give presentations on part of the syllabus so that knowledge is shared wider and allows them to practice their presentation skills. Behaviours are the interpersonal skills that sit alongside the development and which will be professional but could also be personal. Interpersonal skills are teamwork, communication, leadership and ability to reflect on their process. Which leads me to the learning cycle. Do you remember this? Plan, do, check, act. When was the last time that you stopped and reflected on how you did something or whether you could have done it differently? I expect that we're all asked to do this in our teams and we do have annual appraisals, but it's often a behavior that is not given enough time and it very well should. With the apprentices becoming more familiar with this practice, they will then likely share that with their colleagues and in the future when they themselves become a line manager or a mentor this will become more natural for them. 
they will become reflective practitioners. The 20% of the job learning means that the apprenticeship is done over a longer period of time. But this longer period of time is going to provide the benefit because it will embed what they learn week by week into their roles and their teams. And this is very valuable. As a line manager or a mentor, you should also be monitoring that progress with a check and challenge approach, quite simply checking what they have done and challenging them on, on their views about it. Benefit number three is methodologies. We all have ways of doing things and it will get us um, to the end goal in the end, but how are we going to get there? You might have heard of some methodologies, apart from the APM body of knowledge, you might have heard of PRINCE2 or even now Agile, but what do they need, mean? It's not unusual for sector specific methodologies to emerge or even organizational specific, such as the NHS or Network Rail. The body of knowledge is a methodology that can be used for any sector and as project management maturity increases, made more specific where necessary. Some key questions that need to be asked and understood, what do we need to manage? How are we going to manage it? Along with the project management theory, apprentices will be shown tools and techniques that can help manage projects successfully. We will include an introduction to Microsoft Project on our programme, and we have actually recently been engaging with one of our current apprentices team leaders on doing something similar for the wider team. Other tools might be the format of a risk log, the components of a project management plan, or even how to go about making sure that knowledge is captured and shared throughout the business. This is especially important during the doing stages of a project, what we call the deployment phase, where change will happen as it always does and how this is controlled and then signed off using the correct governance structures is incredibly important. Since 2020, the way that we work has undergone a dramatic change, or for a good portion of us. This means that we are now more reliant on technologies and we need the skills to use these. It would be good if all these technologies spoke to one another, but they don't. Anyone in a large business who has needed to procure something will have been faced with a financial system that is usually central to the business. This means that you might not even have access to directly procure yourself, but you're reliant on someone else in the business. This needs understanding and managing. And as projects are unique, this means that sometimes the skill sets are something that we cannot provide, in which case we need subject matter experts or SMEs. Those SMEs will need to align to the way that we are delivering projects, and sometimes that can be hard work. Again, a better understanding of this is important. The apprenticeship will explore different methodologies and through colleagues on the apprenticeship, there will be learning about other approaches that might be of benefit to you. Benefit number four is knowledge exchange. Knowledge exchange is crucial. Imagine as a line manager being able to send someone off and learn all about project management and tell you about it relevant to your project in a way that will benefit you. As we go through the apprenticeship, we will use a reflective notebook to encourage the apprentices to note how they have considered any knowledge against their current roles and jobs and who they've spoken to about this. This is a great way to share knowledge. Remember, there's also an opportunity to check and challenge from the line managers and the mentors. As we engage with different types of organisations, we see good things, best practice, and everyone can do this and it can also be shared. For large organisations such as the NHS, they have dedicated a Skills for Health website, which they use for apprenticeships. There are 350 different types of apprenticeships that people in the NHS can apply to do. And what they've done is they've taken the apprenticeships, not just in isolation, but they've complemented, identified career paths through the organisation. Professional body support for the trailblazer groups are important and give additional resources for apprentices. 
The APM PMQ is that benchmark qualification and is a real sense of prestige for those people looking for a career in project management. And in fact, a lot of job descriptions nowadays will have this PMQ as a requirement. As training providers for the APM, we are able to share success with our colleagues and hear back from the APM about topics that might have lower pass rates, giving us an indication of where we could then strengthen our material. And then as training providers, we work with what's called Endpoint Assessment Organisations, EPAOs. Um, and this approach is the same. We share our success and areas for improvement and can hear back through that community about their experiences. And all of this is really rich material for us to lean upon when maintaining our apprenticeship programme for the cohorts. And finally, through opportunities such as this webinar with Your Hub, we're able to share the benefits of the apprenticeship wider. Whilst these four benefits are not exhaustive, I hope it's allowed you some food for thought as to whether apprenticeships, but more importantly, a project manager apprenticeship, would be something that would work for you. Projects are unique and transient, and the management of projects can be done in a way that offers effective use of resources and the adoption of best practice methodologies, tools and techniques. I'm now going to hand back to Mike, who's going to give you some practicalities around the programme of what we deliver. Joseph, that's a treat. Thanks very much. Sorry about the background noise. Uh, that you might hear here in a month. I've just got to have the windows open. Um, right, practicalities, the usual what, why, where, when sort of stuff. I will do them in that sequence, more or less. I'm going to demote the who to the bottom to get a very smooth transition to Rosie, who's waiting in the wings. Um, so just to go through those then, I think we've covered the why with all of those benefits fairly substantially. The what, you know what we're talking, we're talking about project management apprenticeships. We're talking about the two, the level four uh, that we do as PL projects, a so level four first year undergraduate degree, so the level HNC. Um, there is the, so that's the associate project manager. You can sort of see the difference in the title. Level uh, six, that's the project manager, <coughs> excuse me, degree apprenticeship. So two, two apprenticeship models. The how, that's this sort of convoluted illustration in the bottom middle. Please don't attempt to read it. But that serpentine journey there, so starts top left and sort of snakes its way down to the bottom left. Uh, that's our 18 month. The level four standard does reference 24 months, two years for the delivery there is flexibility and we believe we can deliver it uh, comprehensively within 18 months. Some organisations do do it quicker than that. With our experience, we feel that's just cutting corners a bit and just overloads some of the apprentices. So we think the 18 month model certainly works for us and judging by our results from the first cohort, I don't think we're far off. I like the term spiral curriculum. Um, that's our approach. So rather than just do a sort of single stranded journey through project management over 18 months, where you might just visit a topic once, we visit all of the topics three times effectively. So we do in the first two months, we do a whistle stop tour of project management to give people the framework, how it sits together. We base things around the project life cycle and the sorts of things that are going on. We then do the slower build towards the PMQ qualification, right? And we have homeworks and we have guest lectures and we have, um, we support the apprentices in gathering reflections on how they're seeing the theory at work in their organizations. And then the third iteration is where we help them build the portfolio, actually seeing it, developing, devising, providing evidence that they're doing it. And you can see on that illustration, you can see different colored boxes. So you can see orange boxes. They are 
So the checkpoints, review points, you can see diamond milestones, key parts, points in the schedule where there are assessments. So the bottom left one is the EPA, that's the checkered flag. In the middle-ish there, you can see the PMQ assessment that occurs after a year. Right, so that's the journey itself, 18 months, three times visiting the different material to help consolidate that knowledge. We think that's a key, um, key success criteria for us. When uh, we are running it uh, with an annual start in the first week in November. So we run the 18 month program. We've currently got two cohorts sort of overlapping um, and that's the way we run it. So the start for us is the first week of November. The where, interestingly, we did start off face to face with the delivery and um, as many of you will have experienced, we've had to, we shifted uh, and we took it, you know, we were just told you can't come in next week and that's fine. So we just moved it to an online delivery and we assessed how it was going and the consensus was this was going fine. <laughs> We take a lot of time, there's an additional support. We're well aware you don't quite get the interactivity sometimes that you'll get on a, um, a classroom-based situation. And we, we're we looking at returning to a classroom-based situation, but it'll probably be blended in the future. When it comes to the how much, you've heard from Josie. So if you're an organization that's contributing to the levy, then it's free. There's a word we like, absolutely free. Um, but even if you're not of that scale, uh, you will get significant subsidy or subsidizing uh, for an apprentice that you would put on the course. So that's good news. When it comes to the who then, shifting things around, again, sorry about the noise of cars there. When it comes to the who, there's us, we're the training organization with experience, with some good results on um, our first cohort of apprentices. Uh, the, there is the apprentice themselves, of course, and there's the employer. Um, so there is this, what we call a, a tripartite arrangement. So there's the provider, there's the apprentice receiving the knowledge from us. And then there's the employer yourselves with the mentoring role as well to support those on the, uh, support the apprentice, the check and challenge that Josie referenced, giving them the opportunity to see project management in action within your organization. When it comes to us, you'll have seen, we work in conjunction with Leeds City College. So we're a specialist provider. Um, when it comes to apprenticeship provision, we're what's called a supporting provider. So we specialize in the project management side. Leeds City College for us are um, a main provider and they do the accessing of the levy and so on. Right, so there was one important person in that relationship, the most important person, and that was the apprentice. And of course, as you know, we've got access to Rosie, who is currently with us. Um, and Josie reassured you, she's not been bribed to say good things about us. Um, so I think it's over to you, Rosie, to tell us what it's actually like. Thank you, Mike. Hi, everybody. Um, yes, I'm Rosie and I'm a current apprentice, uh, apprentice on the level for um, apprenticeship. So I work as a senior project officer at Leeds City Council. And despite my title, I guess, suggesting that I should be already be a project expert, um, I've never had any actual formal learning or training around project management or project management skills. So my career in projects began when I joined local government through the National Graduate Development Programme. So as part of this, I moved around various services and therefore naturally picked up on project work because by definition, I was moving into a service where I could pick up something discreet, kind of uh, start it, run with it, close it and move on. Uh, so I guess you could say I've just 
learn about projects kind of on the job, picking up skills and knowledge as, as my career has progressed. And I suspect there's probably a lot of people like me that have just naturally progressed into projects without kind of um, undertaking that theoretical uh, learning. So, however, for me, I think I wanted to do this course because I've always been kind of aware of my limitations due to not having that theoretical knowledge to draw upon or not being aware of the whole range of tools and techniques that could support me in my role and help me get the job done basically more efficiently and effectively. So prior to this, I've looked at uh, a number of uh, project management courses, but um, budget, I guess, was always an issue for, for my managers. Um, and when I saw this opportunity through the levy and my manager obviously didn't have to find a budget for it, I kind of leapt at the chance and it was a great opportunity. So I'm really enjoying the course so far and what I'm taking from it is lots of practical skills that I'm able to bring into the workplace. So for example, how to use um, MS projects, develop Gantt charts, scheduling, budgeting, identifying the critical path. And I can already see that had I had this knowledge previously and then skills previously, um, how I could have planned projects more accurately and more efficiently um, on past projects and how I could have used those skills to better com to communicate with um, the project team and wider colleagues. The learning from the course is also um, making me understand how to better use the tools and techniques that up to now. I think on reflection, I've probably been undertaken as a bit of a tick box exercise. Um, for example, communication plans and risk registers are something that I would always have done as part of my wider project management plans. Um, but I guess my understanding of them now on reflection is that I've never really used them effectively as part of good governance. And now uh, my understanding uh, at a deeper level, I think I can naturally see where I can improve my projects going forward. So um, as an example, I'm currently closing down a big project, with, which I've just led on, where we had lots of change towards the end, loads and loads of change, and it all became a bit hectic. Um, and I've been reflecting on that. And I think that, I guess, I think on reflection, when I'm looking at it, could I have anticipated those changes better? Could I have used my risk logs better? Could I have undertaken risk workshops, um, worked with my colleagues better? And that's the kind of reflecting that I'm doing. And therefore, would I have anticipated these changes? Um, and would the projects have been delivered smoother towards the end? So this reflection is really helping me, um, helping me and will de definitely uh, impact how I shape uh, my approach and my projects going forward. In terms of shaping my future, um, I th certainly feel that I'm growing in confidence. It's consolidated my practical knowledge with the theoretical knowledge. Um, and I think that going forward, I will certainly be a, a better projects manager for it. Thanks so much for that, Rosie. Rosie is doing a, a great job on the apprenticeship and we do have high hopes for her, not to pile the pressure on too much. <laughs> um, so I, I hope that you all now have a better idea of, of project management apprenticeships. Mike sort of whizzed through that serpentine program that you could see, but probably not read. If you would like us to come and speak to you more about the details of what is in the program, then we'd be very pleased to do that. Um, we have been doing these as the City Council and find that it does work best when we not only have maybe potential apprentices, but also their line managers as well. So everybody gets to hear the detail um, and by all means share with other teams and, and departments too. So that is the presentation finished and I hope that something in there has struck a chord. Um, we are now happy to take any questions that you have and I'll let Chris come back in and manage that till the end. Thank you very much.
That's great. Uh, Josie, Mike and Rosie, thank you so much for those contributions. And I think just listening to that, whilst I've been aware, certainly construction related in terms of the APM, um, it was good to have that overview, actually. Um, and going a little, you know, sort of 10 yards backwards just to come forward again, it's quite good to put that into context. So I hope that's been helpful for people. Um, quite happy to take any questions from anybody. We have just looking at the clock. We are running down for about the last seven, uh, eight minutes, et cetera. Um, so anybody can pop a question through the um, sort of Q&A button. But actually, because just fresh on my mind, actually, here's, here's a quick a quick follow up from me for Rosie, as soon as you've just more or less finished the presentation there. How, how, how have you <clears throat> kind of managed um, to combine, obviously, a full time job effectively uh, with your studying and the course, um, you know, leading up to your examination in October? So I guess it's a 15, 18 month period. So how, how have you find accommodating all of that? Um, I think it's about planning your workload well, obviously, and um, having an understanding manager. Um, so the course is uh, every Thursday morning, so that's just blocked booked out in my diary. And in addition to that, there's kind of the, the, the 20% um, learning on the job learning. So I've also kind of block booked uh, every couple of hours on a Friday afternoon out, because obviously that's generally the, the quiet time when you don't have meetings. Um, in all honesty, sometimes I'm able to, to get a little bit of additional studying in that time. A lot of times I'm not. Um, I work in a project environment, so I naturally have peaks and troughs in my workload anyway. So at those quieter times, I'll try and you know, spare an hour or two to do a little bit of uh, additional work or homework. Um, I do have to do homework in my in uh, in my own time. So I'll put the kids to bed and one evening a week I dedicate a couple of hours to getting some work done. So it, it's just a balance, really. Um, I think importantly, I work well with the um, with the team, with Josie and Mike, so I can let them know when I'm under pressure at work um, and when I can't get to lessons and they'll record it. And again, I can watch that back in my own time or where I'm struggling to do a homework and they allow me that flexibility. So I think it's just been, um, just been really flexible and, and yeah, and just communicating well with the, the, the uh, with Mike and, and Josie and allowing that flexibility and communicating well with my own manager as well. Luckily, she's understanding with it. Yeah, and I think I think I mean that's a that's a fair answer. I think you you, you also need that understanding and, and play it, don't you? Just yeah. to accommodate some some of the time there that might be needed during the working hours, because that kind of works hand in glove really with 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 the course. So um, yeah, it's just interesting how you fit it all that in, particularly with raising a family as well. There's a, quite a yeah. bit of juggling going on there. Um, <laughs> We, we do, uh, thank, thank you for that, Rosie. We do have a question in from Pam. Um, I'll just throw this to Josie and Mike, which, which uh, is thanking you for the presentation. But the question is, are you on the registry uh, of apprentice training providers? Or do we you need are, to refer to we, that question? We, we are on the register, on the oh. ROATP. So thank you, you will find us... Um, you'll find us on there, Pam, as a supporting provider, as I said. So we are uh, a small company relatively with um, 30 people, um, 20 consultants, four or five on the training side and four or five on the admin. So you will find us as a supporting provider. We intend to, uh, or we would like to upgrade our membership to um, main provider, but we're on there obviously in conjunction with Leeds City College. So yes, you will find both of us on the ROATP. Here's a quick question for, for you, Mike, actually, um, with just a couple of minutes to go. Um, sorry, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna redirect this to Josie. Um, just interestingly, after the conversation today, um, what would you say to someone who uh, wanted to do the apprenticeship, uh, but was not actually in a project role? Yeah, so we, um, we've we actually had in our first cohort um, a couple of apprentices that, that haven't been in a project role. And, and of course, we can um, work with them in terms of the, the sort of processes that they're involved in um, and seek out 
where we can um, sort of align it with the syllabus that we're teaching. Um, if we have someone that is not in a project role, when we come to do the portfolio of evidence, this is the other great thing about having a sort of community around you, is we can really lean on um, other colleagues, um, people within their business, but also other apprentices as well, to get some of that experience. So an example was a, a lady that we had and, and she was um, in uh, recruitment and we put her in touch with a project manager mentor and she was able to go to, um, I think it was the Leeds City Station Development and learn more about their risk processes, the risk management plan and how they update that risk log. Um, and she was able to get experience that way. So it, it's really important to, to recognise that these apprenticeships aren't just there for people that are project managers already and want to you know, get better at project management, but they should also be there as, a, as an opportunity for people that haven't thought about it before and, and have thought, actually, you know, that's something that I might like to do. I'm not quite in it, but we would, we would look to sort of provide that support where we can, like I say, internally, and then working with the employer as well. That's fine. That's good. That's good to know. Um, we are bang on the dot uh, at 11 o'clock. Um, so I am just going to casually bring this to a close. Um, I'm also going to ask Pam if you have got time, and I'm sure our panel here, we can loiter for a few more minutes. If you would like to hang on uh, when we cl uh, close this down, um, we could probably just patch you in for an extended conversation there if you so wish. Totally leave that up to you. Um, just in my final remarks, thank you so much for all those attending. I hope that has been informative, something to um, consider. I'm sure most of you, if not everybody, will be familiar uh, with what we've been talking about today. But it's good to hear that again and also from uh, Rosie. So thank you for your contribution, uh, Rosie, on that. From our point of view at your hub, um, Thank you for attending. We do have uh, another webinar next month, if I can plug that on the diary date for the 17th of August. And that is our very own Steve Baker and Fergus Aitken. They will be um, doing a session on the most recent uh, construction playbook, which I think you'll find that uh, interesting. Uh, Julie will be doing the usual um, circulars via the normal channels on that, but you can also find details on our yourhub.com um, website, the events page there. Um, I think that is it uh, for me this morning and the team. So thank you to uh, Josie, Mike and Rosie. Thank you for attending. And as I said, Pam, if you wanted to hang on, please feel free to do so. And um, we can continue the discussion if you so wish. Thanks ever so much for joining. <laughs>